Hi, it's Dan again from BPMS, uh, continuing the series of tutorials about BPMS Administrator here. Uh, this one's going to be about entering basic data and starting your database in case it was blank. So what you usually want to do is you want to put the information about the facility. And let's say we're going to uh, discuss a case in which we don't have actually, um, we have a facility with a customer, but there is no device in yet. So you basically want to perform a survey. Actually, you perform the survey and you decided that some certain type of device needs to be installed in there, in a facility, right? So to go about this, you would first have to put the information uh, about the facility, right? I usually start from there. Open facility and then put the information. I'm going to call this Dan's uh, shop, whatever it is. Street number, I'll put something, one, two, three. Street name, if I type something and go to another field, I will get a prompt that this street is not in my uh, database. And it is advised that you put things like this in, in uh, street names and all that in these fields, in the tables appropriate for it, because it's easier later on to find them. Uh, so I would say yes. It will open up a table. I'll say, it, I'll say here street, uh, sorry, Smith type, I'll say street. I can actually use the drop down street so this is how it's going to be displayed I can close out of this so if I go to another field and I go back here then I can pick it up now why is this important you could be typing dot after here or abbreviated as str and when you're searching later on you can have problems so it's always a good idea as soon as you enter a new street in a system to enter it this way or just double click on this field which will open the table so you can enter other streets for example Adam Street again I'll use the let's say Avenue this time right so this is how it's abbreviated right if I go to another field go back here then I have it here and if I want to actually if this was blank so I need to um, type in and find the street. If I start typing S, right, it will find the closest match. So S, M, it will still give me the Smith Street, okay? So address, uh, that's my address, street number. I don't have address two. Uh, by default, this is now portal Bernie BC because that's how my BPMS is set up right now. Same thing, you can double click and add more cities here. If you double click on the field, so then you can choose other uh, cities if this is in states or whatnot. So this is right now for Canada. So I'll put some faked uh, zip, uh, V3F or D5, for example. And I will say that this is a low level hazard facility. And uh, I can actually set the survey cycle for this. I can say that it's five years. I can say that um, if I want BPMS to notify me, I will eventually say that this uh, building needs to be surveyed. Let's say the next survey date is going to be 1st of November 2011. And this way it will be a reminder to tell me because today is the 2nd November and it will be in a reminder to tell me that I need to uh, send a survey letter for this. So in order to send any letters or to do absolutely any communication with the users of these backflow devices, you need to have a facility information and you need to have a customer information. I'm going to add a customer from here. You can do it from facility form and I like to do it because I'm just starting, right? So I'm going to click add customer. And so here it is. And uh, if I had this customer in a database, I should be able to just uh, use a drop down menu type few letters and find this customer if it's already in a database because we can have customers having many facilities but I want to deal with the new one and BPMS helps me here because it can uh, just copy the address from the facility so I can use the same one I don't have to let's say I'm gonna say yes just so to save me some typing and uh, that's how the shop is named then shop but then again I can put here the name Dan, and I'll put my name. OK. 
okay and you can see that then uh, the contact name has turned to be here and also uh, if I had this auto update from mailing info the address block will populate here now this is important all these uh, details here those are the fields that are going to be merged in your letters later on right so when you say dear sir madam it would be contact name for example or the last name so it would say dear uh, mr stanwick for example or when you're adding let's say the for the header of the letter you can actually add this whole block it's all fields that are available to insert in your uh, in your letters okay so if i close out of this I have the facility, I have a customer for this facility, and at this point, I can actually start sending uh, letters. Because what you want to do, if you don't have any information about uh, the device, maybe there is a number of things you can do. You can send um, basically the inspections or surveys. In this case, I'm going to say that I was at the facility, and that they set some certain requirements for this facility and I want to send the survey letter so they know they need to put the device in, in the facility, right? So if I go close out of this, if I go to my reminder, so I'm not going to actually send the letter yet. I just want to create this survey because I want to say that they need to put some certain device, right, in a facility. So I can again go from here, I go from facility, and if you look at the very bottom, there is install devices. For now, there is none. Uh, survey inspections, I'm just going to create one. And I'm going to click on new survey inspection. And it asks me whether it's a survey. It could be inspection or grease inspection. So I say it's a survey. And I'm going to prepare a record for just one facility here. So that's how I'm going to use it. I'm going to hit OK. And date surveyed. Let's say I'm going to say again first... November of 2011 surveyed by this is the name that I put in here prior to uh, starting this tutorial and I'm going to pick it up basically you would go to testers if I double click this field it will again give me the surveyor table so if I before went to testers and put many others actually surveyors then I will have more than one I can say new I can say Dan, I can say in here, I don't know, George, and so on. I'm not putting the family name for now. So basically, now I can have more than one person here, right? So let's say it was surveyed by Dan, by me. Um, so yeah, that was the survey. And of course, I say that the changes are required. What are the changes? List of requirements. I can say uh, you need sorry need to put an rp device in a boiler room for example okay so this will actually turn to be a field later on in a letter where i'm telling them what i require them to do and so i can close out of this and i can close out of this too if i want to send this now i can go to my reminder and i can go to this survey letter click prepare and now I can choose what kind of letter it is here, right? So there is various kind of letters. Later on, we're going to discuss how to basically change these letters or maybe add new ones or whatever you need appropriate for your workflow. And so I'm going to use the low hazard survey letter one here. Okay, here it is. And uh, I'm going to leave the letter options as is because I want to say that it was sent on that day. Here is the number of days to comply. All that can be set through customization of these letters. Now, the date would be March 2012. Okay, we're going to change my uh, date here on my computer so to show you how this works. And let's say the survey info, if I say leave unchanged, whatever I typed in as requirements will be uh, then in this letter. If I was to print 10 letters and if I want all requirements to be the same for all of those, then I can use it like this. I can say for each survey letter, set survey info to, and then I can change some certain things and even do the list of requirements. But for now, I don't want to do it. I want to leave it as it was, okay?